to quote the greatest television character ever made. When asked what my favorite season is, I answer, <laughs> awards. Every January, the Caldecott and the Newberry are announced, and you probably know what those are. They are some of the oldest awards given to children's literature published in the United States. Um, the Caldecott is given to picture books, and the Newberry is given to older children's books. They can be picture books. It's getting a little, a little murky in these years. But those aren't the only awards announced. I'm going to read a whole list because it's right here. Boom. The Alex Awards are announced, the Coretta Scott King Awards are announced, the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement, the Children's Literature Legacy Award, the Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media Award, the Newberry, the Margaret A. Edwards Award, the Mary Hill Arberth, I'm not gonna pronounce this right, Arberthnot Honor, the Michael Prince Award, the Mildred L. Batchelder Award, the Odyssey Award for Audiobooks, the Pura Belpre Award, the Randolph Caldecott Medal, the Robert F. Seibert Informational Book Medal, the Schneider Family Book Award, the Stonewall Book Award, the Theodore Geisel Award, the Williams and C. Morris Award, and the Yelso Award for Excellence in Nonfiction for Young Adults. There's also the Asian Pacific American Award for Literature and the American Indian Youth Literature Award, which is given um, every other year. If you were in the library last year in January, I don't remember the day, but there were a lot of you here because I distinctly remember that. When New Kid won the Newberry Medal, I jumped out of my chair and high-fived patrons. If you were here for that, that was a great day. So when New Kid by Jerry Craft won the Newberry, that was a huge deal because it was the first graphic novel to win the Newberry Medal, and it's a great graphic novel. So I get very excited about these awards. Um, I have called the Emmys my Super Bowl in the past because I spend a lot of time making lists. I love awards. But that comes with the caveat of I understand completely that these awards are inherently problematic because they are rooted in white supremacy and racism and sexism. I know this, so when I see a winner that I get excited about, I'm excited, but I also know the history of these awards. I also know that when a bad choice is made, it's because of the history. So I live in multitudes, I live in a both and. So I bring you a list of books <laughs> in order. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm gonna try to not talk about them. I'm just gonna list them and then there's gonna be a list um, from Evergreen hanging out around here, um, wherever you're watching this, um, where you can look at the descriptions and see if you wanna read them. But this, this, this is a list of books that I think should win or could win the Newberry. And as we go down the list, it's more and more of who I want to win the Newberry this year. Let's fingers cross it. Let's do it. Okay, the first one is Our Friend, Friend Hedgehog by Lauren Castillo. I'm not going to talk about it, but it is like Winnie the Pooh and it's very good. Next is Trowbridge Road by Marcella Pixley. It was on the long list for the National Book Award. Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk. If you've read Wolf Hollow, then you know the Orn Wolk is A Game of Fox and Squirrels by Jen Reese. This one was especially picked out by Miss Ashley. She loves this book. We're the only one that owns it in our network, so check it out. Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake and John Classen because I love books that can make me laugh out loud. Stop talking about the books. Just read the list. <sighs> Fighting Words by Kimberly Burbreaker Bradley, whose author note breaks your heart. The whole book breaks your heart, but the author's note should win a Newberry on its own. Keep it together. Twins by Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright. A great graphic novel. Beautiful artwork. It's amazing. When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. It's so good. It's so good. That one was also picked out by Miss Ashley. Clean Getaway by Nick Stone. It's so good. It's so good. It's so nuanced. There are so many things in there. I love this book so much. Efren Divided by Ernesto Cisneros. I mean, 
so good. It's so good. Okay. Leaving Lyman by Lisa Klein Ransom, which is a companion novel to Finding Langston, which won a Coretta Scott King Met Award or Honor last year. I can't remember. This book is so nuanced as well. And it just, it gives such humanity to the bully character in Finding Langston. And it's so good. <sighs> Class Act by Jerry Craft, which is a companion novel to New Kid. And I have heard people say that they like it a lot better than New Kid and there's a lot of Easter eggs in there. And it's just like an ode to loving comics and as well as being very, very like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. I can't, okay. When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and um, Omar Mohammed. A great memoir, a great graphic memoir. Also long listed for the National Book Award. Prairie Lotus by Linda Sue Park. Oh, it's an updated little house on the prairie and I I can't say what I want to say but it's very good it's very 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 good it's very good <sighs> Land of Cranes by Aida Salazar I love a novel in verse I love novels in verse and I love when authors include little handmade not little but handmade drawings to, that the character drew but it's in oh please read it please read it show me a sign by Anne Claire Lazat a great own voices um the main character is deaf she lives in a deaf community it takes place on Martha's Vineyard in the past it's historical fiction the next one the next one is oh King and the Dragonflies by Kate and Calendar it's so good oh my gosh I love this book so much it is all about like grief and loving yourself and accepting yourself and it's magical realism which I put in quotes because magical realism has like a whole history behind it but it is like magical realism and it's like how to love everyone around you in the face of like blatant homophobia and <laughs> but it's so good I'm gonna break the iPad it's so good okay we have two more stand up Yumi Chung which is a both and book, which is all about like identity and own voices, but also about like wanting to live your life and be funny and like make people laugh because it makes you feel good. Oh, and finally, finally, <laughs> finally, I can't contain my excitement. I am so excited. I am so excited. This is a debut novel and I don't know if it has a shot at winning. I hope it does because I love it so much. If I had any power, any power whatsoever, this book would win every award in my heart. And it is From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. I love books that contain multitudes because humans contain multitudes. I contained, I contained multitudes in this video and it's, oh, it's so good. The main character whose father is in prison um, she's like discovering the history of like the prison industrial complex and like also she wants to win a baking competition and she's like having trouble with her best friend and it's just so good it's so good and so well written and it draws you in and it's this beautiful story and the cover is beautiful and it's just a great book and I hope it wins <sighs> that being said from the desk of Zoe Washington is our first pick for a new book club called Kid Lit Fan Club which um, is a book club that's going to start in January and it's for adults. If you are a fan of children's literature, join Kid Lit Fan Club. We're going to meet every month and we're going to read picture books and middle grade and graphic novels and some YA. Um, I'm very excited about it. And From the Desk of Zoe Washington is our first pick because I do hold enough power to choose that. So sign up starting December 21st if you would like to be a part of that book club and talk about these wonderful books with me. I am sweating. I'm so excited. 